This girl might look like any other eight-year-old. But in fact, she is unique. Hi, Sam! She was born with one of the rarest disorders known to man. In the history of the world, we've been able to find somewhere between four and eight children that have been able to be described as surviving um, with this condition. Shiloh Pepin is the world's only living mermaid. Her legs were fused from her waist down. She had no rectum, no genitalia, no uterus, no bladder, only six inches of large colon and a quarter of a kidney. Why is my daughter here? Why has she survived? Somebody forgot to tell her that she was supposed to die. This film follows Shiloh and her family for eight months as they face some of the biggest decisions of their lives. She's up. Yeah. Mom, what happened to me? What's the next best step for her? Possibly just requiring an amputation and just taking it off altogether. I'm scared. I'm scared that's her home. I want somebody to tell me what to do, what's the right thing to do for her. I'm a mermaid. Some people are the same, some people are different, some people are short, some people are tall. Look, I'm not even quite the same than all the others, but some people just like the way I am. Kenny Bunkport is a small town in Maine in the United States. It is here on the coast of the Atlantic Ocean that Shiloh Pepin lives with her family. Um, these are my clothes that my mom organized and, and two, th four little drawers. And this is the drawer I get ready for school in. This Wednesday, it's got a little flower on it. I wear every outfit that matches the socks I wear. That one's Monday. The pink one's Tuesday, and aquamarine is Sunday. It makes a rainbow. And that's all the colors for my butterflies. I like butterflies. I really love my cousins, my parents, my whole life. For an eight-year-old, Shiloh is remarkably comfortable talking about her unique condition. Cyrenomelia is a mermaid syndrome that contains two legs that are stuck together to make, to make one whole leg. It's the way I was made when I was born and uh, feels pretty good. Feels pretty good. Her father, Elmer, has given up his career as an illustrator to look after Shiloh full-time. She has every reason in the world to be bitter, to be angry, but she's the exact opposite. She's always made people feel that it isn't so bad, you know. Like, you know, if this little girl can do it, so can I. Hey, is that a jewelry shop? You got it. Maybe I can go there next time we're coming here to celebrate your anniversary. I do accept. I'm not having two legs. It's just that some people have two legs and I don't. When people call me a mermaid girl or a mermaid, it doesn't really matter which way. You call me, you can call me mermaid girl or mermaid. It doesn't really matter anyway. You that crane? Yeah. Isn't that awesome? That's what they unload and unload big things to fish with. Oh. The genuine joy that she gets out of life gets transmitted to everybody. And you watch this little girl that's totally different and think, she's as happy as can be. What do I have to complain about? She's a fighter, and she'll always be a fighter. She, uh, she's never given up. She's not let, never let anything stop her. I think it's that quality there that's helped her, that's helped her stay here. It's March 2008 and the family are making the 25-mile drive to the medical center, where Shiloh has been going since she was born. Hey! Hello, Shiloh! Good to see you. So you did 
just showing everyone around? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> slow down. You slow down a bit. <laughs> Since birth, Shiloh has needed constant medical supervision. A butterfly! I love those. Today, she's having a routine blood test. Oh, yeah, you gotta say the magic words. Give me the magic words. Abracadabra! Alakasplat! Make that blood appear! <laughs> okay, here's a squirt gun. <laughs> He's totally gonna get it! What do you need? No! <laughs> Don't even squirt me! I got gotcha. <laughs> Dr. Matt Hand is the kidney specialist who's looked after Shiloh her whole life. Awesome! Shiloh has an extremely rare condition. Um, it's referred to as mermaid syndrome or also called sirenomelia. The whole, uh, essentially lower part of the body is fused uh, all the way down. Inside Shiloh's tail-like lower limb, her leg bones are separate. She has two feet, but they are severely twisted and interlocked. In the history of the world, we've been able to find somewhere between four and eight children that have been able to be described as surviving um, with this condition. Almost every single one of these children die either in utero or in the womb, or die right after they're born. Like, is she going to live to be 15 or 20 or 25 or 60 or whatever number we happen to pick? Um, the parents approach it as I do, which is we just sort of enjoy every day with her and appreciate every day that she's here. Papa, what time is that? Shiloh's family have always taken precautions to ensure her health remains stable. But soon, her life will be hanging in the balance. Eight-year-old Shiloh Pepin has mermaid syndrome, one of the rarest disorders known to man. Today, she's enjoying a special day with her family. You are the bestest mom <laughs> that I could <you> read <laughs> You are the bestest mom See? in the whole big world. On the whole big world. <laughs> For all you do and who you are, I love you, mom. Happy Mother's Day. Love, Shiloh. Oh, thanks, baby. Give it to Mommy so she can open it. Ooh, where did she get me? Oh, Shiloh, that's beautiful. She's hoping you'd like it. Oh, and the earrings to go with this? Yeah. Oh, oh thank you, <laughs> baby girl. That's wonderful. Mother's Day is a holiday Leslie thought she may never be able to celebrate. Leslie and Alma were married in 1997. Leslie was already six months pregnant with her first child, but things didn't go according to plan. We lost Molly when she, when I was eight and a half months pregnant, she was stillborn, um, which was extremely traumatic. Yeah, she, um, yeah, she wrapped, she was, she wrapped the cord around her neck and cut off her, uh, her ice water. Her ice water. <laughs> and then she didn't make it. The following year, the couple's prayers were answered when Leslie became pregnant again. But an early scan brought devastating news. They just came in and said the baby's legs aren't moving. It, the fluid was fine, but the baby's legs it was in the same position they were before. They hadn't moved at all. They hadn't bent. They were just... Any moved movement. And so they were thinking either the tissue, either the legs, there was tissue wrapped around the legs and holding them together, or it was Cyrene Amelia. Oh, and you remember they brought the book? Yeah. All there was was pictures of dead babies that oh. were born with this, and it was really horrific. And I really didn't want to believe at the time that uh, this could be happening. There was no way, I think, that we ever expected anything to go wrong with our second. No. Doctors told the expecting couple that their baby would almost certainly die in the womb. 
At that time, there was only one known child in the world who had survived being born with mermaid syndrome. That's when they recommended to that we terminate the, the pregnancy. But we decided not to. Shiloh was born in August 1999. She weighed a healthy eight and a half pounds, but doctors immediately confirmed that she had mermaid syndrome. God, she was beautiful. It was hard, you know, because I, she had the condition and nobody knew what it was, and nobody expected nobody her to survive. Didn't even want to treat her for crying out loud. They said we had more odds of winning the state lottery than we did of her survival. It wasn't just Shiloh's legs that were a problem. Inside her body, her unique anatomy meant her life was hanging in the balance. She was born with almost no large intestine. She has no rectum, no bladder, no vagina, and only one ovary. Healthy children are born with two functioning kidneys, but Shiloh was born with just a small portion of one kidney. When she was just four months old, that kidney failed. Leslie and Alma were presented with a dilemma. And it's like, okay, we have a choice. What's our choice? Well, you can, we can try to put her on dialysis. Okay, what's the other choice? We cannot try to put her on dialysis. I said, what do you mean? She'll, she'll die? And he said, yeah, that's our choice. We didn't have to put her on dialysis. We didn't have to move any forward. We had gotten to the point where all the doctors had said she was going to die. And that was our choice. I looked at Leslie and I said, look, she hasn't given up. I don't think we should either. I think we should go and take it as far as we can. Against all expectation, Shiloh survived and has managed to lead a relatively normal life. Now aged eight, Shiloh's health is still precarious and she is no stranger to medicine. This is an antibiotic that keeps her so she doesn't get any lung infections or anything of that nature. This is her prednisolone, it's her uh, steroid. Because of taking oral steroids, she developed an ulcer. So um, she has to have this for her tummy. Twice a day, Shiloh must consume a complex cocktail of nine different drugs the taste of which she has never become used to. Mm, that's gross. I know. Last one, sweetie, bud. There you are. Give me five. Up high. Down low. Too slow! <laughs> Think we should change those, no. Shiloh was born without openings to pass urine and feces, and her waist is collected in bags attached to her body. Because of this, her clothing has to be specially adapted. One of the things she has because she has both bags <laughs> is if we get her the long men's briefs um, and I remake them just into one leg, then it goes over her bags and it holds pretty good. So I just get by packs of these and basically I turn them into something so it's like one leg like this. Although Alma and Leslie have made great sacrifices to raise Shiloh, Leslie sometimes questions her decision to give birth in the first place. Her life's never going to be easy. It's just, it isn't. It's a, it's a fact because of the way she was born and the struggles that she's going to have to go through. It's going to suck sometimes. And sometimes I really worry because I'm the one that wanted her here. And maybe it's too hard for her. And I was selfish. Mom, why am I sweating? I don't know. Why are you sweating? I haven't ate lunch yet. Oh, so are you sweating because you're hungry? Yeah. Uh, what would you like? My pizza. Okay. Despite her short life, Shiloh has already had over 150 medical procedures, as well as two kidney transplants. It was very tough for me. 
going to the hospital and no it's a disaster it destroys your life and it's very hard for me that you just can't be sick anymore I just couldn't take it anymore from being sick all these times I've been sick for years and I just couldn't take it anymore I just can't one thing that has become increasingly difficult for Shiloh is her mobility when she was younger she was able to scoot about easily and even climb the stairs but as a result of her second kidney transplant in August 2007, Shiloh has put on over two stone in weight and now can't move far without the help of her parents. In order to monitor her weight increase, Shiloh is regularly weighed during her hospital checkups. Mom! What? You're in there. Oh. Lock your wheels. To come out to 81 and a half pounds. Okay. That sounded about right though. He's up. Up a little bit from last time, but yeah. okay. I'm sorry. No, honey. No, no, no. Weights fluctuate, pumpkin. No worries. That's worry fine. But what happened to me? No, you just you gained a little bit more weight. That's all. What can I do to stop? You don't have to stop. We just have to make sure it's good weight. That's all. The issue is that she's gained a lot of weight after the transplant. A lot of times the children will gain a considerable amount of weight, and she did. And to be honest, part of it is my fault, because for years we tried to get her to great gain weight, and we were getting her to eat and trying to really push food on her and what have you. And it was hard when she was on dialysis to really get her to gain weight. Now. She's eating everything because she's hungry and she feels so well and the transplant is working phenomenally well. It's just an unbelievably good kidney. Um, and so she's eating um, a lot more. You know, the, the hard part, Shai, is that you're, you also retain a lot of fluid up in your upper part of your body because of all the... Yeah, all, well, all up in here and up in your face because of the because your vessels are all occluded, so that it doesn't drain well. I just can't stop eating. Yeah, well, and we're gonna and what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna work with that, okay? So what I'd like you to start with right now is getting a minimum of five fruits or vegetables in a day. No more junk food. Well, you can have some junk food, Shia. What I want you, I'm not gonna tell you what not to have right now. What I want you to do is I want you to start putting these in your diet, okay? Is popcorn considered a vegetable. Um, no. no. Okay, I wouldn't. What we want to do is we do want to keep you very active. You're already pretty active as it is, but we're going to talk a little bit about some exercise stuff that you might be able to do to try and help you uh, push -ups. lose some, some weight. Yeah, you're already doing some push-ups, which is good. I mean, she loves to dance. She loves to do those things, and we can set some time aside every day um, where you play a little bit of music, um, get down, start dancing, doing some of that. All right, Shai? Okay. okay. We'll see you later, darling. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Hand wants Shiloh to start a new regime. Today, as they do their weekly shopping, the family will have a nutritionist assessing their choices. How's that, Gretchen? I'm a dietitian with a countdown program. I met you when you were a little baby. How are you today? I'm good. Hi, I'm her mom. Nice to meet you. You already have a car. You a car? Yeah. See right here, it says 96% fat free, 60 calories per serving. If you stick to the serving sizes, you're good. It soon becomes clear that making changes is not going to be easy. Shy. There's too much fat in these. No! We have to figure it out. Stop. Okay? This isn't. This isn't. Alright, now stop. Breathe. 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 I know. Stop. Stop. It's hard to give up sometimes. I know. It's wicked hard to give up something, isn't it? Sausage, egg, and cheese biscuits. She loves these things. It's the first word out of her mouth when she opens her, when she opens her eyes in the morning. Dad, my biscuit! Now how about broccoli? There's broccoli behind your dad. Do you eat broccoli? I want to try some broccoli. <laughs> Do you like it raw or cooked? Amazing. She won't eat it. Cut. We're slowly making changes. It's a gradual process. Um, but it's hard for anyone to go from one food they're used to, they're comfortable with, and then branching out and trying something different. Is that a good one? We can make it into little balls, or we can make it into chunks, and you use toothpicks to eat it and make it fun. I'll try it. Shiloh! It's time for dinner! 
Chicken. It's lunchtime, and Leslie has prepared a healthier alternative to the junk food Shiloh has become accustomed to. You want me to cut up that extra chicken? Um, I want you to eat some more carrots, and then I'll give you some more chicken. Carrots. What? Carrots. Okay. Okay, um, okay. Do you want to go to college? I don't know what I want to be for grow up. I just can't make up my mind. You want to be a professional shopper? No! Well, what do you want to do? I'm a librarian. That's a good one. Or a to... helper. What kind of helper? Or cafeteria lady. A cafeteria lady, yeah, that's a good one. Or an artist, mm -hmm. art instructor, mm -hmm. a music teacher. Mm -hmm. You could be any of those things. Shiloh has dreams and aspirations, but her parents have learned to take each day as it comes. The following morning, she is rushed to hospital as her health suddenly deteriorates. Last night, Shiloh spiked a fever. When we woke up this morning, her fever was still 103. Um, and she started having diarrhea and her urine dropped off, which usually means that she has some type of urinary tract infection. We're just trying the best we can try. So we can. The nurses work hard to try and reduce Shiloh's temperature. It's, it's disappointing. I'm, and I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Shiloh. It's okay to have it here, but... You know we know that on a day-to-day -day basis, your life can change on a heartbeat. That we could go from having a healthy child to having one that is near death. I'm scared. I'm scared. That's But okay. you need to hold very still. Yeah. See? That's it. That's... See? This is it. This is what you were crying about. I was scared. Of course. Yeah, sure you were. A lot, you know what? You, you know something, honey? A lot of big people are scared of this. Mm -hmm. Get the band-aid. There. The thought of her passing away, I tried to put that out of my mind completely. Although, you know, it, it, the risk is always there under it all. After a few hours, it's time for another temperature reading, and it's crucial that Shiloh's temperature has dropped. Frank, a low temperature. Do the low temperature dance. No temperature. It worked. Woo. Shiloh's been given the all clear for now but it may only be a matter of time before she's in hospital again. First time I came here, I was a little bit scared, but I got used to everybody and no one. I'm not scared anymore. I'm not scared. Mermaid syndrome, or sirenomelia, is one of the rarest conditions in the world. There are thought to be just five survivors alive today. Four of these children had their legs separated as babies. But eight-year-old Shiloh Pepin hasn't been able to have leg separation surgery because of her previous kidney problems. She's the world's only living mermaid. For the last two years, while she's been on kidney dialysis, Shiloh has not been allowed to go into the water. And although being in water helps her mobility, she has never had the chance to learn to swim properly. You okay? Yeah, it feels fine. Okay. You ready to go? Yep. What's my dress? What dress? It's, in, the, it's in your bag, along with everything else we need. Mm -hmm. Today, it's her first lesson with a swim coach in her cousin's pool. Hello. Hi. How are you? Yeah. This is my daughter, Shiloh. Hi, Shiloh. Shake your hand. 
Nice uh, to meet you. Tommy, I got you wet. <laughs> you wet. That's all right. I've been doing swim lessons all day. I've been wet. Oh, okay. It's okay. I'm not afraid of the water. You have to work? check out the buoyancy with her flipper because she mm -hmm. doesn't have any weight in it. Sure. So it's trying to keep it under the water. What I usually do when I get in the pool is I stick it right between my knees mm -hmm. and hold her upright. Sure. And, and I don't know how to tell her to keep it under the water or how to use it. And then she gets really frustrated because it works like this when she swings it. And when she wants to go forward, she goes backwards. And when she goes back, when she wants to go forward. So she doesn't know quite how to do that. Try to keep them under the water. Can you blow some bubbles? Jared uses a float to keep Shiloh upright in the water. Good job. Wow. I never tried this before. <laughs> With that flotation on her stomach, if anything happened, say she lost her balance or anything, that's how she's going to end up is on her back. I teach a lot of kids that are her age that won't even put their face in the water, won't put their eyes under, won't float on their back, won't do any of that. So. It's usually the trust building, the first one, and she's took to me pretty easily, so that's a good thing. Yeah, I've seen a rowboat before. Well, you're trying to make your arms just like the oars. Try to keep them on the water. Oh, a motorboat. A motorboat? That was really good. That was awesome. <laughs> I think the next thing is getting her to be able to maneuver that by herself without holding on to my hands. Um, and I think the biggest thing is going to be floating on her back because that's definitely something she can do without so you know anybody else touching her. You're going to be swimming by yourself in no time. You're like a little, ma little machine. <laughs> Anything that gives her movement and then when she trusts other people, it's awesome. Oh yeah. To watch her in the pool where she's free, where her mobility is no longer an issue, she can get around and just be like every other kid. Once this guy can teach her how to do it, she won't be dependent on anybody. She, she could figure out how to get over here and do whatever she wants. Do you have fun in your swim lesson? Oh, yeah. You're a good student. Um, Mama, Jerry said I'm allowed to keep this. You can keep this? Yeah, you can keep that one. Yeah. Cousin's pool is one thing, but Shiloh has a sight set on the local pool, so she can swim with children her age. But due to the risk of Shiloh's waste bags becoming detached, a public pool has always been out of bounds. Elmer thinks he has the answer. Do we want to have a full-length suit, or do we want a shorty up to here? I don't know. Which one would you prefer? Would you prefer something that kind of covered your feet or something that stuck? I just like something to come up to cover up my back you so know. they won't come off. Okay. But that's I'd the say problem. Probably something like here. Okay. Okay. You like what? So how much do you like swimming? A lot. You do? Yeah. Okay, can you put your head back a little there we go, love. Put my hands under here. <laughs> Am I tickling you? Yeah. All right, honey. <laughs> there we go. Now, you wear your bags all the time. Yes. Okay. So we need it big enough so it accommodates for that all the time, right? Six inches. Next time you try it on, you're going to be hopping in a pool. So, how's that sound for you, Shiloh? Mm-hmm. All right. Ten months have passed since Shiloh's kidney transplant. Although her health is still precarious, the transplant has allowed her to live a more normal life. This includes interacting with other kids at the park, something high up on Shiloh's wish list. Can you climb up the stairs? Excuse me. I'll try. Okay, ready? I'm, I'm, let go of it, Melissa. Hi. But the possibility of a future throws up a whole new set of concerns for Leslie. It's so hard to explain that we never thought we'd get here so we didn't have to worry about it. The Shiloh has always been very independent in, in some respects. Um, her dependencies are primarily on her father because he's always been her lugs and her mobility. So trying to get her to do it on her own, especially now she's gained weight with her, her mobility issues, is making it harder. You're a little nervous. It's okay. Oh, this will see I'm you right come here. down. I'm right here, baby. You worry. You worry. Um, I worry about if we're not around. <laughs> what happened, honey? Oh, you went upside down. Oh, what'd you do? I worry about her being able to take care of herself. 
her legs don't bend, so she can't put on her own pants. We don't know with growth spurts whether or not that's going to work, and she'll be able to do that. So she might be dependent on somebody her whole entire life. Leslie and Alma have been confronted with tough decisions throughout Shiloh's life. But as she approaches her ninth birthday, they face one of the most difficult times for any family with a daughter. The biggest concern I have is when she hits puberty. <laughs> Shiloh does have one ovary, so she will go through puberty. Like she has no female genitalia. There will be no physical contact. And Matt used to say to me, well, we can give her a vagina because we can make a man a woman. That's not the problem, but you know she won't feel anything at all. I'm all. I've always wanted a boyfriend of my very own, very own, and I've I have met lots of guys, and so in the future I might be I might be a dating person. What will your daddy make of that? Tell him you're too young to have a boyfriend. <laughs> Okay, say still. So. Yeah, you can't move when Sammy's doing polka dots. Shiloh will probably meet somebody who, who see, sees her for the person she is and not what she's missing, just like the doctor did, just like Matt did. If she finds somebody and that person is worth his weight and salt and has a good heart and can look past her anatomy and see what's inside of her, I think then that's the person for her. How beautiful do they look? Awesome. If I knew that, that there would be one person that would love her just the way she is, the way that Elmer and I love her, I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about this anymore. But I don't know that. And for her to go through life alone after we have struggled to keep her here would really bother me. As far as her going through puberty and everything, I don't even want to think about it now. <laughs> hey, Dad, listen. I'm not going to school today. Just call and let them know I won't be in here today. It's late July 2008. Dr. Matt Hand has asked Shiloh to come in for an unscheduled consultation. I've been sending people emails to talk about how we're going to deal with your leg here in terms of trying to get you so you can balance a little better. All right, I'm going to have you sit up. Here, take my hands. Ready? One, two, three. Oh. Okay. We're not going to do anything bad. Jeepers. So, so now she's on her side. Now you're on your side. Now I want you to go the other way, Shy. I want you to shift over towards this, towards here. I won't let you fall. Just let, just shift a little bit, okay? Can you can you twist yourself that way at all? No. No. <laughs> there you go. Was that a no? Dr. Hand has discovered a serious new problem. Shiloh is developing a worrying twist in her spine. <laughs> One of the things that's become the issue post-transplant is that there's more adipose tissue sitting in this leg and, it's, and there's more adipose tissue sitting here, yeah, which has created the turn, okay? And I think the weight is playing a big role in yeah, it. No so the question then is, is do we need to talk about a full separation to try and get us some more stabilization? Right now, in order for the way she is, she has to use one hand to maintain herself right. at all times. And so she doesn't have the usability of both hands. Right. So it's either trying to roll her hips out, so right. it's flatter, is that? Well, I don't know if we can get her hips to roll without without, without doing the separation. The other question is, is do we just do something to get rid of some of this extra tissue here? Can we sculpt this a little bit, at least in the short term, that will allow her to sit more stably? Uh, we're just trying to figure out what to do okay. to try and improve so your back isn't twisted so much when you're trying to sit. So we're just trying to make it easier, okay? We want you to be able to sit up straight and tall and grow and get stronger. The mention of a possible leg separation procedure has shocked and upset Shiloh. Until now, she has not been strong enough for doctors to consider this possibility. Again, it's always been really complicated because of her 100% mortality. Um, how much you do to try to fix something, if in the process of fixing it, we lose her life. It's always been told to us it's our choice. Elmer's under the philosophy there's nothing wrong with it, don't fix it. <laughs> I am in the mindset that, that if we don't try to help her now, that she's going to get even more malformed. 
A leg separation could give Shiloh a chance of a better quality of life, but it would be a complicated and risky procedure. Most likely this would have to be a staged procedure with the legs gradually rotated out. Um, and for Shiloh, the other thing we were thinking is that we'd probably have to put skin expanders in underneath the skin to allow enough skin to go around both extremities once they were separated. Now, here's the real catch to the whole process. These are the vessels that come down into her legs, one here and one here. But what you can see is as they get all of these blood vessels get down in here, they form essentially a nest. That makes the separation a much more difficult process because unlike having two separate legs that were just stuck together that you could cut up through here, this would run the risk of losing all the blood supply to those feet and to those bones and therefore possibly just requiring an amputation and just taking it off altogether. Leslie and Alma now face the biggest dilemma of their lives. Should Shiloh remain the world's only living mermaid or should she face the risks of surgery in order to become like any other girl? They've told me that if we were to separate her, it's 13 years of surgeries. 13 years. Nobody knows what's going to happen if we don't do anything, and nobody knows what's going to happen if we do anything. From the date they said she was going to die, I have her life. I've had it for eight years. When they said I couldn't have it at all, that should be enough. It should be enough. And it's not because it, she deserves so much more. Good job, Patrick. If she gets to the age where she wants to have it done and we go through it all and we find out what's involved and what we got to do and go through and if she still wants to do it then we'll back her up but I'm not going to say this is what we're going to do whether you like it or not because I wouldn't want it done to me. With her legs though, we, there are no guarantees they're even going to work, they're even going to function if we have them separated. Either way, a choice must be made on what's best for Shiloh. The Pepin family are facing a huge dilemma. The four other children born with mermaid syndrome all had their legs separated as babies, but no one has ever attempted this complicated and risky procedure at Shiloh's age. Should she begin 13 years of surgery with no guarantee of a successful outcome? This is a decision that none of the other children like her have had to make because they were made when they were tiny. When, when they couldn't vocalize or verbalize. So those children will grow up having two legs and not knowing what Shiloh is known as a life. It's her body. She's the one that's gonna have to take the pain and the rehab and, and all the other uh, orthopedic surgery and stuff like that. I feel that that's, that decision should be ultimately up to her to make. As the surgery will have a huge impact on Shiloh's life, Leslie and Alma have agreed that the decision should be hers. Leslie broaches the subject. What we have to talk about, Shiloh, right? Yeah. Just you and me? Yeah. Okay. Is that um, I'm worried about how your back is and how hard it is for you to sit up. And if there's something they can do to help you sit up and, and be better. <laughs> I think we need to talk to Matt about Dr. Matt about it, okay? okay? But right now, right now, we all we have to do is talk about it, okay? We're not doing anything; we're just talking, yeah. okay? And do you trust Dr. Matt? Yeah. Yeah, I trust Dr. Matt too. Dr. Hardy. Dr. Hardy, that's right. So if I talk to Dr. Matt, yes, right, and we figure out that maybe this is a good plan. What? I don't know yet. We don't know what the plan is going to be. Good plan for what? For you. 
For what? I don't know. To make you sit up better? To make you scoop better? Yeah. Do you trust it will do the right thing? I'll trust you. I know you do. And you know why? Why? Because I trust you. And what do we do together? Be brave and get through it. That's right. Be brave and get through it. And you certainly have been brave and gotten through it. Yes. Yeah. I don't want to get my legs separated. I know. Can you tell me why you don't want them separated? Well, it's just because a thousand times people keep asking me, Shiloh, can your legs separate? And I'm like, what? I told you guys for a thousand times I don't want to get my legs separated. Why? You may have told me a thousand times you don't want to get your legs separated, but you've never told me why. I'm a little scared. I know. I know. But it would, it would, don't you think it would be helpful so you can move around better? No. I know. But it'd be hard for me. Because of the surgeries? Yeah. Yep. That's why I don't want to. I know. Mm. Mm. It was my choice to do what's best for me. It was up to me if I wanted to have my legs separated or not. It was my decision right. if I wanted to go through the surgery or not. I guess you can't miss what you never had, right? I, mean, I don't want it to do it. I don't want the surgeons to do it. I know. That's right now, yep. Yeah. But Dr. Matt, he, she said the better way to is exercise is to go around the house to lose some weight. He decided to do what's best for me. With the dilemma behind them for now, Shiloh and her family can look forward to her future. Ah, we're almost got it. Ah. Okay. Leslie and Alma want Shiloh to live a full and happy life just the way she is. Wow. <laughs> you love it? All right. How's that feel? Feels good. This is going to be awesome, Shiloh. I'm a mermaid. Well, and we have also, one boy. And I got one fin. Look at you, my beautiful girl! <laughs> yeah. With her new wetsuit allowing her to swim in a public pool for the first time, Shiloh is more determined than ever to prove she can swim unaided. I heard you got a new suit. Look at this. Dr. Matt Hand and nurse Sue Sampson arrive just in time to share in this special occasion. She's doing the donkey paddle. That's perfect. Keep clapping your arms. You know that the whole journey has been pretty amazing for these two people, Matt and Sue. They have basically been with us every step of the way. Six, seven, eight. When she saw her swim five feet on her own, I saw the tears in her eyes, thinking that we've come so long and so far, and this is the payoff. She's healthy, she's happy, and she's swimming, and I couldn't ask for anything more. All right! Yay! Nice job, Shiloh. I honestly don't think we'll ever do a separation on her. I think that we will come up with other ways to help support her. Let's get back to the ladder. Swim over there. They got yeah. We have a pretty unique kid here who's been able to do a lot and will continue to do a lot. I did pretty well. <laughs> she did awesome today. It's hard to just to decide what you want to be when you grow up. You're the best swimmer I know. There's so many choices. Yay. An actress or a princess. Anything I want to be. Anything I want to be. Over on Fiverr next, we meet the world's only female twin autistic savants. They have the most incredible memories and minds. The Rain Man twins and extraordinary people. Next year on Five, the crime drama with Clint Eastwood, A Perfect World.